Hello, everybody. Hey, how's it going? We are back. I, I think, yeah. Yeah, we're good. Mike's rolling. Everything rolling. Well, we are fucking back. Welcome to podcast number 29, because we're no longer doing episodes, if you don't remember. But uh, you could all you could listen to all that in the previous one. But here's our new setup. I mean, I like it. I mean, do you like it? I love it. Check it out. Close up. Little frogs. Yeah, little frog for the big frog. And then there's also baby frog, but he's somewhere. Um, you gotta find him. I guess happy <laughs> holidays, everybody. How was it? your your Thanksgiving, your Christmas, your New Year's, Valentine's Day would have already had happened by the time this airs. I mean, we skipped a lot of a lot of major holidays. Happy Hanukkah. <laughs> you know, we, we skipped we skipped all the good ones. You know, we wanted everyone to spend time with their family. You know, the all twenty of you. What yeah, I'm it? no longer saying one or two. I'm really hyping this up. Oh yeah, at least we twenty of you we guys are watching it, this. Yeah, we're we're big time. I mean, look at us now. You see all this stuff. Like, what me and him were saying is that you know we were gonna upgrade on mics that will have more things so that like when people come on, they're you know just really easy. But we fucking blew through the budget before the episode <laughs> even started. Do you see that hand that we got from the last episode? <laughs> yeah. That blew the budget. <laughs> that blew the budget. Like we're we're that's actual gold. These aren't even our chairs. We were still past this we're, budget. We're, we're, we're still renting these things. Yeah, anyways. We um, just haven't asked for them back. I'm just glad to be back. Glad to talk to you guys. Hope hope everybody's doing good. Hope everyone can just kind of like yes. sit back and relax and, you know, enjoy the pot or whatever. I'm, I know I'm sounding all big time, big Hollywood about it. But, uh, I mean, now <laughs> we're all looking hella good because look at, look at this man. The cardigan and the the voodoo beanie, of course. Yeah, I, I brought my jacket. I got to look good. This jacket can hold two guns in it. So. <laughs> oh, shit. I forgot about that. <laughs> but uh, before we dive into uh, all the, you know, funny stuff, because we're just so damn funny, um, I want to talk about taking risks. I looked better without the beanie. You did. You looked really handsome without it. Devish Real quick, everybody. Devilishly handsome. You know, you don't got your whole life just to play it safe. So if there's something you really want to do, you just go ahead and take no the condom. Risk. Even if you fell for it, even if you fell, <laughs> no first. condom. Because um, I heard nah. If she says no, I heard like something. She have to put it on. Remember, bro, it's taking risks. Whatever. I'm trying to be genuine, but uh, real <laughs> quick, I'm just I'm just para paraphrasing this real quick. But uh, Jim Carrey said some things along the line that his father always wanted to be a comedian, but he took the safe route and got like a corporate job. And then 20 years later, his dad lost the job. So it just goes to show that even if you play it safe, you, you know, you're still risking it. So why not risk it for something you love? Because you never know. So I just want to say that to everybody. Hopefully, you know, you could take that and do something with it. Because I've met so many talented people and they let like depression, anxiety take over them. And it just it fuck it fucking sucks because their creativity is like just well, it's off the fault. fucking charts. And it's not their fault. But, <laughs> you know, with life, work, all these other things like. Just, you know, take the risk. That's all I'm going to say. And I'm not going to sound like a broken record. But anyway. Oh, legit, I, I understand yeah. where he's coming from. Come on, bro. I just, my main goal in life is to buy a Mercedes to laugh at my poor friends. That's, that's it. I just like how someone's going to tune in, hear this, and be like, wow, they've gotten so political. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> wow, this topic is such a fire de democratic <laughs> debate. <laughs> Well, okay, let's spice it up. Joe Rogan's racist. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, you know. The sweat. Okay, so from now on, we're never going to have anything about Joe Rogan here anymore. Yeah. For, for those who remember, we had a very, very sweaty picture of that man on the back of our wall. Well, actually, we're already canceled. Because we had we had him oh, on well the show. Oh well, fuck! We had him on the show. You bastard! We didn't we didn't even get to make it yet. And we, oh, so and that means we can say racist shit then. Watch. No, that's like, not what it means. <laughs> okay, you're right. You're right. No, but anyways, for those of you who don't know, I'll say it right now. The Untel po the Untel Next Time podcast always likes to bring you week late news due to filming. If you don't know, Joe Ro Joe, there's a video where it's a bunch of videos of Joe Rogan just saying the n word, and. I'm not laughing because I think saying the N word is funny. <laughs> he sounds I'm like laughing a, he because sounds like a modern warfare lobby. Because <laughs> I'm I'm saying it's funny. Okay, no, I'm not saying it's funny. It's the fact that Joe Rogan said all that shit for so long and got away with it, and and somebody went out of their way, grabbed all the files, put them together, and made it into a YouTube video. You know what the video? That's what's funny. You know what the video? Is that me his of? career is ruined? But <laughs> <laughs> but okay. 
<laughs> look, yeah, racist stuff isn't funny, the, but when the, stuff happens to racist people, it's funny. The thing that the video of him saying the compilation of him saying the very hurtful words. <laughs> Yeah. It reminds me of that video that g- of the guy that that edited all of Macho Man Randy Savage's heavy breathing into like a fucking twenty minute video. Where he's like, <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, bro, I'm not gonna lie, that's like the funniest shit in the world to me. Like, if we can find a little, f- oh, we can't because yeah, because it's, du- it's, it's w- WWE. Because WWE's trying to take us. <laughs> bro, oh, we have beef with W. Wait, did that happen after the pod? No, no, no. We figured it out. We we posted about it. From what I remember, <laughs> bro, WWE hates us, so we're canon now. <laughs> yeah, we're we're part of the WWE. We're universe. part of the WWE. <laughs> they universe. try to take us, Fucking allegedly. <laughs> hope you see us on the Hall of Fame, motherfucker, right next to Trump. <laughs> but wait, it's a video of just a man breathing. It, it's Macho Man, Randy Savage, because because like he's just like. Oh, because when he talks, he's like, the cream of the cup. Now you need to listen here or there. You need to find out. Like, you get me? So it's like that, just that heavy ass fucking breathing he does. Because this man was on steroids, bro. <laughs> if you don't know, if you don't watch wrestling Side whatsoever. Side effects, heavy breathing. <laughs> if, you don't, if you don't know who Randy Savage is, uh, have you have you seen the original first Spider-Man with Tobey Maguire? He is Buzzsaw. It's like, get down here, you little spider. What the, who made that for you? Your boyfriend or whatever and the fuck he says. And then Spider-Man goes on to make homophobic comments. <laughs> also canceled. Hashtag, not my Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean, right? When he's like, yeah. did, your, did, your, he's like did your husband do that? <laughs> Actually, yes, Spider-Man. Have you seen that meme? I don't know if anyone's <laughs> yes, seen it's that. Like where he's like, you're on the wrong side of history, Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and uh, apology to... Uh, Frank and Alex, because I kept telling them that Toby and Andrew Garfield would not be in the new Spider-Man, and they were. I was wrong. I accepted. I think the movie would have been way better with just I know just you don't Andrew watch the Garfield. podcast, bro, but just to let you know, when it comes to UFC, I'm your dad, bro. That's all I'm going to say about that. He's never going to see this. Fuck that. I'm going to make a clip of this and send it to him. He's going to see this. <laughs> I'm sorry. Anyways. Andrew Garfield was the best person in that movie. Just going to say that right now. Super redemption. Okay. Spoiler alert. Bunch of spider sex in that movie. Yeah, definitely. That's Did you know spiders, ha- uh, dicks fall off after sex? That's why they had to bring them all from all the universes. Exactly. Because it was like this huge gangbang on Mary Jane. Oh, no. It's not Mary Jane. What's her name? Michelle no. Johnson? <laughs> They're high schoolers. <laughs> so, no. Well, the actress is overage. <laughs> We're just no. No. They do a gangbang on all the fucking enemies. <laughs> there. They g- okay, see, I didn't want to spoil it. They get, Doc Ock, it they get Doc Ock for oh, a run fuck, for his Doc, money. Doc Ock jerks, <laughs> jerks off like eight dudes at the same time. He only has four claws and two hands. <laughs> he got two feet? <laughs> fuck. Anyways, enough about that. Uh. <laughs> fuck, Doc Ock really put it work this movie. The actor, bro, I gotta give it to Okay, him. I'm pretty sure everybody who sees this has seen that Spider-Man movie. Okay, don't you guys think it's sad that Willem Dafoe is just a, <laughs> is just a man just with dementia? Just senile man? <laughs> He's like senile. He's like, just like, a man. Like, so, like, <laughs> wh- where am I? <laughs> like, you know, like where he looks all like... Spider-Man. Like, his acting is amazing. He's obviously Willem Lighthouse. Willem Dafoe is amazing. Yeah, you know, I mean, we don't have to go back there, but <laughs> he's just an amazing Mark! actor. You know what I mean? But... um. We're just saying that, like, he played it so good. It, like, it just, like, it really made me feel like he didn't know where he was. <laughs> he genuinely looks like a senile <laughs> fucking man. Uh, there's him. a scene where he's, like, in the tube. And, he like, when he first gets in there, because Doctor Strange sends him in there, he's, like, looking around like this. And this is the second time we went to go. Oh, well, second time I went to see the movie. And I remember my friend Gabriel was looking at me, and he's like, you're a fucking child. Because I started laughing because I'm like, oh, like, like he looked like he was lost. Like, like where am I? <laughs> like, the part where, like, he's at the, what, what, what is that, feast? When he's at feast, and he's, like, stealing the donuts and putting them in his pocket. <laughs> where he just, just looks like an old, crazy, senile homeless man. Where he's just like, <laughs> Spider-Man, where's my drip? Like, just, I don't know where my drip is, Spider-Man. Like, just think about how crazy he's, uh, like, just... <laughs> Amazing actor, anyways. You know, I gotta give it up to Gabriel because he did say this. I, I'm, I'm shouting him out because he said this to me, but it's actually one of the best scenes when uh, Spider-Man comes on his hand. Oh yeah, they bring up the the the. <laughs> no, is I, I come mean, like, a censored word? No, it's not. A, it's come sperm, fucking jisms. 
Yeah, so I think, <laughs> can we just say sperm, and it doesn't have to get censored if we say sperm, but if we say cum, it has to get censored. Jackums. Well, either way, we No, it's when, when they come on Willem Dafoe's hand, <laughs> and he goes like, that's a neat trick you got there, <laughs> Spider-Man. <laughs> that's... <laughs> Jesus. What, what's going on? Why is my hand stuck? <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> Where am I? <laughs> and then, um... Okay. We also saw Scream Five. You didn't yes, like it. I did not like it. I thought um, I can give it like very quickly. Um, <laughs> when you said you didn't like it, my face scrunched up. That's not just because I'm disgusted with this guy. It's just that like my fucking I was I was cleaning dust went in my nose. So if I sound all stupid, well that's why. Uh, what what, what is it called when uh not meta? Yes, it is meta. But there's a uh, it's another word. Uh, when you know you're doing it, like. You know your joke. Okay, it, it was meta. <laughs> the thing is, oh, being self-aware. Oh, yeah. To be self-aware only gets you so far, but the movie was just so self-aware. They thought they can do shitty jokes. They thought they could do, like, bad writing. I'm not saying it was bad writing. I'm but saying, like, always they can. Screen, I'm just saying, bro. like, yeah, because Scream is a meta movie already. It's already very self-aware. You, you want, like, these you want, like, Whoa, but Oscar it's like, it's even It's it? even more self-aware so they can get away with their lazy writing. That's Whatever. the thing. Whatever. And, like, the characters are just so one-sided, too. To me, it felt like an upgraded version of Scream 4, if you've ever seen it. I oh. can I can genuinely say that. And they have announced Scream 6. Yes. You know what? And I will actually watch Scream 6 with high hopes. <laughs> and honestly, as long as they got um, as long as they got Shaggy and they just get Marlon Wayne, just so I can get a double... <laughs> But wait, wait, there's more. Just like, just so I could get a double of that. <laughs> but there's more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I fucking wish we had those blood capsules. Where it's like you, you just bite into them and just start bleeding. But wait, there's, there's more. more. <laughs> One day. I think. Oh yeah, no, we talked about. So, uh, concert wise, I mean. Oh yeah, it's the beginning of the year. We've only been to what? Two concerts? Three concerts? We saw the Red Pairs, right? That was this year or last year? That was... Fuck. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> anyways, shout out to them like always. That one's Viva Pomona. I don't know. I don't know either. Anyways. Regardless, I saw System twice this year already. Twi- this was last week. Yes, <laughs> just last week I saw System and Corn twice. Yep. We went to fucking... We went to the System and Corn concert on Tuesday, San Diego. It was fucking amazing. Jonathan... Jonathan Davis. Davis. Exactly. That's his middle name. (laughs) Jonathan Elotero Davis. (laughs) But uh, before we get to that, the concert that we went to. Oh, well, actually, no. The concert we went to last Friday. Did you have your sock out? Okay, go on. Uh, it's like kind of crooked, but I just took my shoe off. But that man, those men right behind you, well, that man right behind you, yep, <laughs> falling in reverse. Oh my god, I have seen falling in reverse eight times. I have seen them, yeah, eight, eight times, fucking times live, and I don't regret it at all. <laughs> this one was really good too. Like he did really fucking well on it stage. It was honestly. <clears throat> It was fucking amazing. It was fucking amazing. Like, just everything about it. It, it just it was so fucking amazing. His uh, crowd interaction was awesome. Um, for those of you who don't know, there's this like, oh, okay, I was gonna say it was a joke, but uh, I guess scandal. I guess at a concert, he threw a mic stand and it hit somebody. It hit a little girl. It hit a little girl. So like at this concert, he allegedly acted like he was gonna throw the, <laughs> the mic, and then he and then he pulled it back, and then he's like, he's like, just kidding. <laughs> Like, it was an awesome show. And then what I, like, real quick, what I loved about it is that uh, right before he played, like, a song from Escape the Fate, he, like, literally was like, oh, like, who's heard Escape the Fate? And it was just, like, some people raised their hands. And he's like, oh, I got a lot of new fans. He's like, all right. He's like, for those of you who don't know, he's like, those are my fucking songs. And then he started, <laughs> then he starts the song. <laughs> it was fucking amazing. What would you love about the concert? Uh, genuinely, I think one of the best things is just, like, a... Uh he he sings a lot of it. A lot of you know, a, little, a lot of artists don't hit their high notes as much as they do. This food, old he, man, sir. You know this man. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, he. That yeah. was because he was sick. Though. Yeah, maybe I don't know. 
True. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Ronnie, he he actually hits his fucking notes. Uh, he has his backup singer. I feel like uh, the this backup vocalist. I think he did really well too. I honestly don't know his name because. You know, I don't, I don't, this won't offend anyone, but it's just like, it won't offend them either. But Ronnie just switches up like new members like every fucking week. Yeah. He's it's like, like he can't keep up. He's like, like an NFL team off during off season. Yeah. So, so you see that poster I have in the back if it closes up, those people have not been in the band in like two or three years. Well, one of them passed well, away. Yeah. But like every, those, the, that's like the original lineup. Like they're missing like one, I think. I think his name was Mika. So this is like, that's the just like you lineup. I feel like. That was the fashionably late lineup too. Oh, okay. Oh, but they're missing Ron Ficaro. I think that's his name. But yeah, like, uh, but that's the lineup everyone knew. It was four people. It was supposed to be four people. That's the one everyone knew. But then you know, fucking one thing leads to another. But then again, at the end of the day, Ronnie said it himself: "Falling Universe is not a band. It is me." <laughs> and you know what? Ever since he said that, I'm just like, all right. He's like, he's like call it falling in me. Oh wait. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. Um. D- Homeboy just parked his car, where the, where everyone else was parking parking their cars. Yeah, like he just like, like he literally just parked his car. Like he's one of us, so you know we we doxed him. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we got his license plate. We were just like, oh yeah, look at that all matte black car. I mean, are you not gonna? I mean, we've mentioned this on the pod before, but I mean, like, are you not gonna bring up of like how he came out and he was just so buff? <laughs> Fuck me, bro. Ronnie Radke is fucking huge. The man is a unit now. Like, this man comes out and it's a silhouette. We didn't see his face or anything yet. It was a silhouette. Like, it's just straight shadow and just, it, he looks so fucking bulky. Like, he can kill you in a punch. He's like, I'm not a vampire. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a fucking vampire, bro. <laughs> but yeah, so. Really enjoyed the it. The following reverse show was fucking amazing. And hey, you know what? To Jake Paul that never fights any actual fighters, except uh, what's that mother? T- uh, Woodley. Oh, a retired, a retired UFC fighter. How good was, was he? Real, real shit. shit. How good was he? He he had his moment. Mm-hmm. I would say that. Obviously, he could come in here and kill us all. <laughs> <but> okay. Well, <laughs> but that's like, a lot of people, but yeah. Yeah, but um, I could take him. Tyler and Woodley. He was he was good for a while, and then he was just on like a big losing streak, and then like. Yeah, the, the whole division changed once, like, Usman got there and all that. Okay, so I'm just going to say right now, because Jake Paul likes to fight people who don't are really not in his league anymore. Or, like, yeah, I would say, like, not in the actual league of fighting anymore or people who just don't fight at all. So if I'm going to throw in a name in that ring, I'm not going to say myself because uh, Jake Paul is fit and I am a fat fucking washed up piece of shit from like what i was what i once was a man i'm a shell of a man now fucking <laughs> jesus christ De- the fuck the self-deprecation is hurting today but like um if i could throw in a name in the ring i want ronnie radke and jake paul to fight i feel like that would be the funniest and coolest shit in the world because i would root the fuck out of ronnie so bad you wear your shirt your appreciation oh shirt? fuck yeah oh if, for people who don't know here's a picture I'm wearing a anti Ronnie Radke club shirt. I don't like him. <laughs> I don't like him. But that's the irony. You already know. I I fucking envy the man. <laughs> Jesus. I crave the man's music. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know what? Fine. Jake Paul versus Ronnie Radke. Okay, that will be the main card. And look, you know, like obviously we're not famous yet. Uh, the undercard is gonna be me versus Julian from the Strokes <laughs> oh, for shit. a lot of reasons. Fuck, you already know. You see, if you've seen the pod, the Aladdin back, one back then, I, I yeah. talk shit about the Strokes. You know what? Fuck no, it. not the Strokes. Just oh, Julian. Ju- just Julian Casablanca. I'm just saying yeah. the full name. Fuck yeah, well, I, dude, I'll, I'll fight him. I'll Let's you. tag team. Just fuck. I, I'm gonna box him, but I, oh, no, it's not tag team. It's handicap match. I'm gonna box him, but only after he box Matt Schultz and like unfortunately knocks him out, and then it's gonna oh. be it's gonna be a revenge tour. <laughs> Matt Schultz, the lead singer of Cage the Elephant. Oh, I hope he never gets knocked out. That man's just a saint. He's just a saint. He is. Honestly, what the hell, Cage the Elephant? I, I'm going to text you guys later. When the hell are you making new music? Yeah, we all have their numbers. <laughs> yeah, we all have their number. It's up there. Also, um, to the people who don't know, COVID has changed <laughs> since we've left. It's no longer COVID-19. It's Omicron now, right? Yeah, it's, it's just Autobots. Oh, and, like, there's, like, there's another one, right? Like, fucking 
uh, f- uh, flu- fluvid. Fluvid, yeah, right. <laughs> it was just like that. Sounds like some twisted like ass co- fucking city in uh, Doctor Seuss. <laughs> yeah, we were just oh wait, about, like, scratch that. Doctor Seuss is racist. God damn it. <laughs> well, you know we're we're in that category too. You know, <laughs> wait, what? No, I, fuck no. <laughs> yes. No. Yes. How I see it, how I see it is like. Billy Eilish is blackface. We're gonna get. <laughs> What was? Billie Eilish does blackface. Well, that was truth. <laughs> Wait, no. She, she did, did black shit. Yeah, she did the voice. See, though, like, we're just. She's racist. We're rela- Look, at, we're just two straight males. We have. We're the most reliable source in America right now. Thanks. So. <laughs> no, I'm just that kidding. That is not good that she said <laughs> no, that either. No, no, no. That's a joke. It is a fucking He's joke. Lying. But, anyways, what I'm trying to say is that. You, you know what? How, every we're time already we- getting canceled. Like,. I just know 10 years from now, somebody's going to fucking, like, find something and, and make it canceled. Like, how are you telling me about that show, Smiley Friends? Smiling Friends. Yeah. Oh, my God. Shout out fucking <laughs> Zach. I'm like, Psychic Pebbles. My God. That show is fucking hilarious. There's a scene in there. It's a Halloween where, like, It's a Halloween special. And uh, one of the characters comes in. His name is uh, Charlie. He's all like, oh, he doesn't want to dress up. He goes, oh, because, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to. Who knows? In 10 years, I'll get canceled for some shit. And he goes, like, just don't dress up as something offensive. Like, just be the Hulk. Be green. He goes, like, who knows? What if green face is racist in 10 years? <laughs> right? Like, what if, like, 10 years from now, aliens come to Earth and then, like, they, you know, they're like, you guys are fucking racist. <laughs> you racist motherfuckers. <laughs> it just bounce out. Yeah. Shout out that show. That show's a fucking masterpiece oh my god the voices in there is amazing too and the fact that they brought in like old artists on youtube that don't really make money off youtube that much they were on Newgrounds. i don't know if you guys remember Newgrounds, uh old animation uh, website yeah i was like what the fuck did you buy yeah uh, da- uh david firth i think that's his name he's the guy that does the voice for salad fingers rusty spoon type guy this guy you've probably seen his face uh he actually came out in one of the episodes. He was a shrimp guy. How do I look? Yellow man. Like, oh, God damn it. Hearing his voice made me, like, squeal like a little kid. <laughs> <laughs> little girl. Like, a little girl. Like, oh, my God. Oh, oh my God. Look, like, David was on TV, guys. Let Check me, it out. Let me glock you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> I just thought you were happy to see him. Um... <laughs> You want to tell the people real quick about a uh, system, how uh, you felt at the end, your weird, your oh, conspiracy. Oh, okay. So, to people who don't know, system of down, hate each other. A lot of people don't want to believe it. They fucking hate each other. Surge bullies. <laughs> Darren. <laughs> <laughs> Surge bully Dar- bullies Darren to the pulp. <laughs> But he doesn't have beef with him. He has beef with the other members, but he knows the other members will kick his ass. <laughs> <laughs> so he just bullies Darren. It's, okay, it, it's look, fucked up. Look, I love them to death. A lot of people know that I do love to slow down. But God damn it, these guys do not like each other. They don't like touring. Well, it doesn't seem like they like touring together. It doesn't seem like they want to make music together. I know Shavo and John have expressed their feelings towards certain members. Uh, the people who don't know that, that's the bassist and that's the drummer. And to the people who don't know that, Sean, uh, Shavo, Shavo, did, yeah, Shavo. <laughs> Shavo You're like, I'm a big o- fan, Shavo, Shavo. Shavo is, Shavo, <laughs> Shavo, he's the owner of the band. He's actually the owner of System of Down. Uh, or the manager, I don't, I'm not even fucking sure anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's what I get for being a fan. <laughs> so, <laughs> the thing is, they hate each other, and like they've already expressed that they could have made a lot of music but some members are just refusing to, and they don't work together as much anymore. So they had a, what, six or five show tour? It was like, yeah, it was about five or six, dude. So that's crazy And then thing. when we, real quick, when we saw him in San Bernardino, the, I think that was only an eight, eight uh, date tour. Like, yeah. they literally just come back, do a couple dates in California because they know they'll make money, and then they'll just and then they just bounce out. You want to know something crazy? I know this is, this is not off topic. What's so crazy is that Serge Tankian has a degree in, in uh, marketing. Sick fuck. That, dude, I'm not going to lie. After reading that, I was like, what if all this was just a lie? Ah, uh, he just knew, dude. No, but then again, he do, he they actually do care about the Armenian genocide. Please look it up. Please, oh, okay. Well, yeah, help. I know they care about that, but they just they just know that they just look at us like filthy Americans. Like we're about to make bank off your dumb ass. <laughs> look at these fat shotgun holding motherfuckers. So, <laughs> so 
They uh, they ended the show. It was the last show of the tour. It was in here in Los Angeles at Bank of California. I went by myself. Uh, I did meet up with some friends though, so that was good. Um, the th- uh, the, my actual my actually actually my tattoo artist and one of my closest friends, Blair. Bullshit. Shout out. She's the one that actually made these. They're fucking amazing. She actually and tattooed my leg. I'm not going to show. And here's a picture of Randy's tattoo. Oh, uh, damn. <laughs> uh, well, we don't have to show it if you don't want to. Here's a picture of his first tattoo. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, no, <I> just, <laughs> so, so, uh, <laughs> so the thing is, they played, they played really good, actually. If anything, this was the most energy I've ever seen. They actually beat San Diego's. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah, because I was telling Nick, like, because um, uh, Las Vegas was, like, a high tier to me already. Tamarin- so we, we saw them in Las Vegas last year. Just, you know, if the Vegas vlogs, if you've seen it. So, like, uh, after seeing them, I was just like, that's top tier. It doesn't be San Bernardino, though. The fuck? That one was just too godly to me. Uh, and then we went to San Diego, and San Diego fucking demolished uh, Las Vegas. It was just so amazing. Surge sang really well. Darren had such great vocals. Everyone played like perfectly. Bank of California. Bank of California just shit on all those. They even beat San Bernardino. That's how fucking good it was. Damn. Yeah, dude. Corn did such an amazing performance. Dude. God damn it. They are amazing. So, cryptic shit, though. Like I said, they don't like each other at all. <laughs> And when you would think they're talking about the tour, sorry, it was a moth. <laughs> you would think it was a nap, but okay, go on. Was it a nap? Oh, it tasted the same. So, <laughs> the like, at the end of the tour, they're usually like, "Oh, thank you guys so much for the tour." Actually, what happened? Search like after it just stopped. Search said, uh, "We care about you, and you don't know how much we're how much we're gonna miss this." So already, that's like, what the fuck. Then everyone hugged each other on stage, and then they all went separate ways. But everyone did say something, too. After Serge got off, Darren said, we love you, and we are going to miss this. Shavo took a picture of all this and said, like, I-, I will keep this in my head forever. And John said, like, oh, dude, like, you guys are amazing. You have no idea how much you guys mean to us and how much we've worked hard to get to where we are. And that was it. And they all went in separate directions. Yeah, because there's, like, four different exits off the stage, and they all went in a different direction. And I genuinely thought, so um, when after a show, when, when it's over, I usually like to stay with my friends or, you know, just sometimes, like in this case by myself, e- I let everyone leave so traffic isn't that bad. I, I just, I can, I stay as long as I can so security guard kicks us out with that same shit that they always say. Fucking, uh, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. Uh-huh. Oh, nice, bro. <laughs> I'll just kick it in the front then. Fucking pussy. <laughs> Also, I did something really grimy after the show. I have not told Nick yet, but I will say it right now. Uh, but after, um, yeah. So after they did that, Glocks I away. waited. I waited like in shock, you know. Like I was like, "What the fuck did they just say?" And I look around. The crowd is like, all the crowd is just dispersed. But there's like only eight dudes left, and we all huddled up and we said, "Bro, they're breaking up." Ah. Uh. Yeah, like eight of us. I did not even know who the fuck these men were. None of them knew each other either. We all huddled up and we said, this is their last show. Like, this is what the fuck it means. This is it. They, they're they quitting after this. And then, yeah, I got really fucking emotional. Walked out. Everyone complimented my flannel. Uh, shout out Nick. He actually bought me the flannel. It was really nice. <laughs> uh, I wanted to wear the – I didn't want to wear the, the jersey today because I always wear that. So – I was I wore the flannel, yeah, you literally pulled up good. In the cardigan. Oh, and I pulled up the fucking cardigan today, bro. Shout out Don Tolliver, little sexy ass motherfucker. So <laughs> the grimy shit, okay? You say it like he's the one who bought you the cardigan. <laughs> but so, go on. So the grimy shit. If you guys don't know this, at, after every concert, the fire in in LA specifically too. The glizzies. The glizzies. The bacon wrapped onion sauteed bell pepper spiced glizzies. So fucking fire hot. They're dog. so fire right now. QC's over here. So dying growing up, they are. growing up, I thought you know there was people that's st- cramp. <laughs> so, so okay, QC got a cramp. <laughs> Q- QC has cramps. <laughs> over there. He has crabs. Yeah. Don't get mixed up with crabs. He has cramps. Cramps. But go yes. on. <laughs> he has on the his crabs dick. on the pubic area. <laughs> <laughs> no, he has he has a, he has a cramp right here. Um, Behind his knee, almost the side of his knee. 
Okay. So go on with your story about the. the so what I didn't, what everyone, what everyone thinks, if you go to L.A. like in downtown, walking around in the Callejones, which is like street street stores and shit like that, like, hey, gold, you want gold? This is very good gold, you know, type shit. Okay. And then like, yes, this Levi's, this everything, it's real. And they sell it's just, it's just off market shit. So you'll see a hot dog stands, but when I was a kid, they were like four bucks, and it was like a big ass fucking hot dog. They do that now, but it's like eight bucks, right? Yeah. So yeah, I thought, you know, these were families who took risk because, you know, uh, I, I thought it was like a hit, like, Hispanic. Somebody th- just trying to get up. They're usually own. more of a Hispanic family, like always. So you think, you know, oh, well, we can't really get, you know, actually like more higher paying jobs so they take the risk in getting a hot dog stand and that's how they would get the money so turns out i did some networking and i also did some studying about this turns out they work for a big company it's not theirs it's all just a lie yeah the street glizzies are a lie some street some yes some street glizzies let's are say, just corporate let's schemes. say 50 50 it's 50 50 for every five carts two of them no for every six cards, <laughs> yeah, saying, I, know, I did the you math. You can't wrong. do math. For every ten cards, for every cards, two and a half cards, for every ten cards, five of them are corporate. Can you fucking believe that? And Hashtag they always, free the glizzy. <laughs> free the glizzy. So that's uh, exactly it. Some of them do the Venmo, and that's the one. The ha- that's how you can actually tell. Some of them need the cash. Some of them only accept straight cash. That doesn't necessarily that that doesn't prove like if that's corporate or not but regardless i looked up and i just saw this lady you know she was so prepared i don't know and i the grimy shit was everyone there's just so much of a crowd and i was fucking starving this is before this who offered to get me food but before like i got home Mm -hmm. so i got to the cart and i grabbed two hot glizzies and i fucking ran I got out two hot glizzies and I fucking ran so out of breath. That's why I texted this who, hey, I'll text you back in like 20 minutes. He did, he did text me that. So he stole <laughs> glizzies and then proceeded to drive home, <laughs> he went glizzies. to my house, and I gave you two more glizzies. <laughs> and then you text. Here's the text. You text. I just fuck it. I just raw dogged one of the glizzies before I even got home. <laughs> you know, you know the struggle sometimes. <laughs> where you just have to raw dog a hot dog. There's just no condiments or anything. You just eat no. it like that. <laughs> All right, now <laughs> we're gonna proceed to the third act. Here's the text messages of the raw dog. <laughs> we're gonna proceed to the third act of the podcast. Um, it is about that time. But before we go, let's give people the advice or or. <clears throat> Let's fill them in on what we do after concerts. Oh, okay. When we go to a concert and we see a band that we've been waiting to see for like a month or weeks or even a year at this point because of COVID, we'll see the band. And then, like, I started doing this and then Randy started doing it. Like, after we see the band, we try to go the longest we can without listening to their music because it just makes it where if someone's like, oh, like, or it makes it when you finally do listen to them, you're like, wow, the last time I listened to them was live. And it, I don't know, kind of like nostalgic. It's, it's, just, it's a good feeling. It's a good feeling. And and in these past couple concerts, somebody else has always been fucking ruining it for us. Yeah, spread to, okay. System of a Down San Diego. So after seeing them, we didn't listen to System of a Down the whole time on the drive home. No problem. I went to sleep. No problem. Went to work. When I went to work, my fucking coworker comes in. Because <laughs> you don't expect this to happen. I'm in the fucking break room. Coworker comes in, blasting System of the Down. He goes, whoa, bro, and starts singing the lyrics and goes, I can't believe you guys saw him yesterday. So those people those people right there, they just want to watch the world burn. I turned my head slowly like it's a fucking suspense movie. It was just like, you dirty, dirty fucking hillbilly beard, mustache, ugly handlebar looking motherfucker. And he goes, what happened? What if your work sees this? I don't give a fuck. <laughs> he ruined system. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, no. He he should be ashamed. He should be fucking ashamed. He's Jeez. my manager, not my coworker. He's my manager. No, nah, dude. What about Foo Fighters? <laughs> that one that, that one, one was the most hurt. Fucked up. So I've never seen Foo Fighters, all right? I finally got to see him with the boys. The boys we got to see Foo Fighters was fucking amazing. They performed really good. They performed very, very long six songs. <laughs> yes. So yeah, they played 
very fucking well. I thought they were amazing. The energy was so good. The crowd, they were, they were loving it. Everyone was so a part of it. It was like a family. So we, I continued that rule where I tried not to listen to them at all. As I'm walking out of the fucking festival, festival, <laughs> festival. That's how mad you are. <laughs> walking out of the festival. On the fucking street, someone's playing The Pretender by the Foo Fighters. And it fucking ruined it for him. The crazy thing is, none of my other homies heard it except for me. Uh, my day, my day, my night, my week was ruined. <laughs> my month, <laughs> my life. <laughs> Anyways, guys. My fucking day. <laughs> lately, I've been doing self-inflicted wounds and getting myself on... No, for like the mu- music. Like, <laughs> oh, okay. I was just like, this man's cutting himself. And no, I'm not barely- cutting myself. Shout out Hawthorne Heights. I love I love that they got to play with Paul and Oh, that's just so Cause funny. Because you know what I felt like? I felt like he was just happy to be there, and that's what mattered most to me. To but people, anyways. To people who don't know, Hawthorne Heights is a band from 2002. They're an old <laughs> The band. lead singer's 45, and he's still singing about cutting himself. This, uh, this guy's still singing that. about love in Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyways. Yeah, lately, like, I'll, I'll go see a concert, and I try my hardest, and I'll plug in my phone, and it fucking plays the song. And what's worse, too, is it plays a song that, like, I saw live that I don't want to hear. But, um, well, that, yeah, it just, it fucks it up. But anyways, guys, uh, that's our time here for tonight or today or in the morning, whenever you will watch this podcast. Um, do we have big ideas in the weeks ahead? No. Have we even plotted anything? No. No. (laughs) Did we kind of wing this whole episode? Yes. But we are happy to be back and hopefully we will bring an episode to you every weekend, every Tuesday. I'm just lying. Four (laughs) episodes a week. (laughs) <laughs> no, fuck no. But uh if he doesn't do it then then we're not going to continue. Yeah, we'll pod. just, you know, that's what it is. So, I hope you guys, you know, hope you guys had a good time and uh until next time. You see